The Collaboration Conversation is brought to you by Project Brickworks, the new ministry dedicated to equipping Christians to use their talents and gifts to bring others into a relationship with King Jesus. Uh, Project Brickworks is a crowdfunded nonprofit ministry made possible by amazing, generous folks like you, and we are very grateful. Uh, We created the Collaboration Conversation as a way for Christians to share about their upcoming projects and how they are using the talents and gifts that God has given them. Our very special guest today is Marcus McFalling, the founder of Reach One, Reach One Creative, and Reach one leadership. He travels around the country sharing the story, his story of overcoming adversity with students in schools, conferences, and community events and camps. And I think that we're going to learn today that that is just the tip of the iceberg of the things (laughs) that you do. And we're really excited to hear about it. Marcus, welcome. And thank you for joining us. Well, it's good to be here. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I do think that this is going to be a very special conversation. So we've connected with you. We've never met before. Uh, yep. through the Be the Change Youth Initiative with mm-hmm. Sydney and Deidre Garrett. Garrett. Uh, Garrett. Yes. And I'm repping some of their merch today. There we oh, go. yes, you are. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Um, and so we are very excited to hear your story. And I thought if you could just start us off by you know telling us about your journey, how you got, got to, to do what you're doing now. And, sure. And, and, and tell us about your so family. Bu- buckle and, up. So, yeah, uh, we're ready. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm originally from Seaside, California. And... You know, I I like to tell my story this way so that people understand, you know, the mindset that I had coming into the world. And so the day that I was born, my father decided he didn't want to be in my life. He was like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Uh, Good luck. And so I immediately felt rejected. I felt as if I wasn't good enough. Now, I didn't understand that as a young kid. But as I grew up, I would come to realize that I didn't know how to receive the love of anybody because I felt rejected by those who were supposed to love me the most. So I had two brothers and a sister. All of us had different last names. And and that was normal to me. I grew up in inner city California. And, you know, there's only a few things that you can do to be successful. At least that's what the mindset was. Either you're going to sell dope, either you're going to be a rapper or a singer, or you're going to play ball. And I wasn't going to sell dope. <laughs> I can't rap. So <laughs> I found this game called oh, football, and I yeah. love the game. The Yay. game was good to me. Uh, it was the only sport that I could play where I could hit people and not get in trouble for it. There you go. And so I was like, that's my kind of game. <laughs> I had all this pent-up aggression. Well, and I yeah. Wanted to, I just wanted to take it out on somebody. So my coaches were telling me, hey, go and hit that person as hard as you could. And, you know, if that person says some, <laughs> talks some mess during the day, oh, they were going to feel it at practice. And so um, that was just my outlet. And, you know, I was blessed with, with size and speed and, you know, that, that combination made it so that I was very successful in football, yeah. got a bunch of division one scholarship offers, you know, was, everything was happening the way that I thought it was supposed to, you know, because football was the game that what I put in, I would get out. If I put the work in, it was going to be good to me, but nobody told me that football doesn't last forever. You know, oh. you hear of these gruesome injuries and stories and stuff, but I didn't care about that because I was very athletic. I was healthy. And you're doing the work. Exactly. Yeah. But I didn't have any discipline inside of the home. I didn't have a dad. I had my stepdad. Now, my mom married a man who was an amazing man who loved us the best that he could. But, you know, he was he had a terminally ill disease that was killing his body. And he was so weak. He couldn't he had to have tape to hold his eyelids open. Oh, that's how weak his body was. He could barely function. He had this disease called myasthenia gravis. And so basically, my brothers and sisters and I, we were just left to raise ourselves um, but I didn't have any discipline inside of the home because nobody had ever graduated from high school. And so graduation day comes and I don't graduate. Four-star recruit, accepted a scholarship to go and play in University of Arizona. Everything's going great, but I can't. I didn't do what, I, what was necessary to graduate. Oh. And so um, I went to junior college. And back in 2005, you can just go to junior college without getting a high school diploma. It just was how, how it was. And... And so that's what I did. And I excelled in JUCO and I'm getting ready to commit to USC. This great school down in Southern California. I was going to go in there after some big name running backs and be the next guy up. But once again, Marcus doesn't understand he has to go to class in order to be eligible. You see, I thought that I was just good enough that my teachers were going to pass me. But when you get to college, they can care less. (laughs) They can care less if you're good at football. Right. And so uh, this is what, what I would say my first God moment. So this is 2008. I'm at my friend at my junior college library. And my friend shows me this school called Malone College. He shows me the website he was going to. And something about the website, literally, it was almost as if it jumped out to me. And I knew in my heart. Now, I hadn't, I hadn't had a relationship with Jesus up to this point. I played church. You know, I went to, <laughs> I went to church, but I wasn't right. a Christian. And something about this website told me I was supposed to go to that school. It was a Christian university. 
And here's how arrogant of a football player I was. I said, hey, I called the coach. I said, Coach Gardner, you don't know who I am. But if you offer me a scholarship, it'd be the best scholarship you ever offered. <laughs> oh my gosh. I <laughs> love I love that. <laughs> Two weeks later, I was on a full ride scholarship to to Malone University in Canton, wow. Ohio. Wow. And, and things went well, man. I, I I excelled. I set a bunch of records and I get invited to the twenty eleven NFL Combine. Now you gotta understand as an inner city kid, everything that I was working for was right before me. Mm. All the adversity, everything that I had overcome. All the obstacles, not graduating, not having a dad growing up, feeling rejected. Everything mm. that I wanted was right there. And I can remember just working my butt off. But it was the year of the 2011 lockout, and it made it difficult for small college guys to get to oh, get drafted. No. I Jeez. had teams saying they were going to draft me, and you know they, they talk a good one. But draft day came, and I didn't hear my name called. So I played four years in the Arena Football League. And I excelled. I mean, I killed it. I did really well. I'm working out for an NFL team down in Texas. And uh, February 22nd, 2014, I had a career-ending injury. I was doing a blocking drill, and I punched block, and I dislocated my shoulder, cracked my clavicle, tore my rotator cuff, and tore my labrum. Oh, for the first time in my no. life, I'm 26 years old. I don't know what I'm going to do. My career is completely over. And what's what's really sad about that is the doctors were telling me that they thought it was just a slight tear in my labrum. They said, okay, you'll be back three to six months. I was like, okay, you know, I've overcome too much in my life to give up now. I got to get surgery, but I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get back to the field because that was my complete identity. I didn't know who I was outside of football. Everything all my entire life was, was built around football. People liked me because I was good at football. People would, would wear my jerseys because I was good at football. And so I felt as if I had to play. And then I woke up from surgery and I had all these portal holes and I realized I would never play again. Mm. And the, and the depths of depression that hit me. Oh, I bet. It's almost like a person's identity. Like everything, imagine yourself right now. Everything you know about yourself, your likes, your dislikes, the things you love to do, your career, everything is just stripped away and you felt as if you're left with nothing. That was my reality. Yeah, that's insane. And so the doctors had prescribed me for the first time in my life. I had never taken drugs, never smoked, never drank. I was so focused on the game. I was prescribed pain medication. And I justified taking the meds because my name was on the bottle. And it was the only thing that could make me feel good. I'm like, you know what? Hey, at least this makes me feel, I don't have to feel the pain. It took the pain away. And so I would take it and I would take it. And I met a beautiful lady uh, at Malone. And for the first time in my life, I never really knew what it meant to be with a Christian woman. You know, I, I mean, I only had two girlfriends my entire life. I was so, that's how focused I was on football. <laughs> I, I was like, dating yeah. girls. I was yeah. like, I'm going to the league because my family was depending on me to make it. Like everybody was depending on me. I got to get out. I've got to get my family out of the hood. Yeah. Oh. Wow. And so I was so focused and I met this beautiful young lady and uh, she completely changed the way that I, I pursued women. And, you know, I convinced her to marry me. So we're in oh. Texas at this time. And, and I'm trying to get back to football because I didn't care what the doctor said. No matter what, like I would always tell myself, there's not a devil in hell that's going to stop me from my dreams. I've overcome too much. And I kept trying and I kept trying. But my shoulder was just that messed up. Ugh. And uh, my wife was there with me and we we're just newlyweds. And you think it's supposed to be this happy moment. But I was just completely depressed. You know, we're we're just trying to figure out life. And so for two years, I was on injured reserve. And basically, I was paid to get high. I was paid every single week to get high. I was I was over prescribed. I was given powerful narcotics that you give to cancer patients. Oh, they want to get out of pain 24-7. Holy cow. Yeah, man. And, and when you mix psychological you know, depression with physical dependency, you're going to create a drug addict. Yeah. And I didn't wake up saying, hey, I want to be a drug addict when I grow up. No one does. Right. But that was my reality. And I was a drug yeah. addict for 1,077 days. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I mean, the depths, the yeah. depths of deception. I mean, you know, when I was in Texas, I didn't realize that you're not supposed to take the medication more than prescribed. I was like, well, I got team doctors. They're going to give me whatever I want. Like, that's just how it is. And so they created a drug addict and then my wife gets pregnant and then the reality hits me. Oh my goodness. I'm getting ready to, to have a kid. And then all these memories and thoughts of when wow. I didn't have a dad growing up, and my yes. dad not wanting me start flooding in. I'm like, I got to do whatever I have to do to be present in my daughter's life. But anybody that may see this, if you don't deal with your issues where you're at, they're going to follow you wherever you go. Amen. And I, I didn't deal with my issues. Oh. I thought that me moving from Texas, going back to that Christian university, that space 
was going to solve all the issues. I thought getting around my Christian friends, everything was going to be okay. All my friends are pastors and they're youth leaders. And so, but my, my, my habit followed me all the way to Ohio. And I didn't realize that you couldn't go to doctors. I thought, okay, if I'm in pain, I'm just going to go to a doctor here in Ohio. So I went to so many different doctors. I went to 38 different doctors for 59 prescriptions in five months. Oh, wow. Depths of deception, and, and that's a felony. So I was charged with three felonies, deception to obtain a dangerous drug. Oh. Everything that had happened in my life, I'm, I'm at the NFL combine. I'm overcoming adversity. I'm overcoming obstacles. I, I'm getting ready to be a father, and now I'm sitting here charged with three felonies. Completely deceived. The things that I would do to get drugs, I would go and wait inside of hospitals and get sedated just to get meds inside of my body. And so June 16, 2017 comes, and here's what happens. My wife knows I have felonies, and I'm driving around my seven-month-old daughter in the car, and, and I didn't care. I didn't care about the choices I was making. I couldn't think past the moment. The only thing I thought about was getting high. The only thing I thought about was buying drugs off the street. The only thing I thought about was finding a different hospital that I had never been to and getting high. That's all I cared about. And my wife called the police on me. And I'll never forget June 16th, handing the police, handing my daughter to the police. And, and that, in that moment, nothing can describe. It was almost like they took my heart away from me. Oh my they like gosh. took my heart and I had nothing else to live for. And so they took me away to Stark County uh, Jail. And for the next three days, I contemplate suicide. And here's how strong addiction is. I'm sitting in this cell and I get released. And I come back to my house. And the only thing that I could think about after everything that had just happened, I lost my wife, my daughter, all those, those impactful moments you think would change someone's life. The only thing I could think about were the 12 pills I had inside the house. Oh, my gosh. That's how strong addiction was. Oh. And so I'm back home. I come home. My wife took everything. She left me. And so for the next three days, I contemplate taking my life to the point where I figured out how I was going to do it. I figured out how I was going to leave the note. I figured out what I was going to say to my daughter. Oh. And this is my first Father's Day. So this is June, June 19th, 2017, my very first Father's Day. I spent by myself. But I thank God that my wife let me FaceTime my daughter on my first Father's Day. And I looked at my daughter in her eyes and I said, Avery. Daddy's going to do whatever he has to do to be in your life. And in that moment, I the next day I checked myself into a faith-based rehab. Mm -hmm. And the best way that I can say it is the devil should have killed me when he had me. <laughs> because I began to see who I was in the word. I opened up the Bible wow. in a different way. It was a faith-based program. And, and so I started to, you know, I actually thought it was kind of crazy at first. I'm like, man, we're quoting scriptures after every meal. And like, what are they trying to brainwash me? Like, what is going on? And. And the reality is this, my brain was dirty and it needed some washing and I needed to wash it with the word because I didn't have the Bible inside of my heart. I had it in my mind. I could talk Christianese with the best of them. I knew what to say, how to say it. But when I connected the 18 inches between my brain and my heart, something changed mm. and I started to read the Bible differently and it started to open up to me. I'm like, oh my goodness, there, there's so much here. Yes. <laughs> it was so simple. I'm like, oh my gosh, he loves me. Amen. Like when, when I tell people the best revelation you can ever hear is that Jesus loves you, there's nothing else that will ever satisfy. Mm. Amen. It's his love. And then I'll remember the day, October 4th, 2017. I'll remember it plain as day. I was sitting in, I was uh, sitting in class and I was reading my Bible, not paying attention, of course. Sorry about that. Not paying good, attention, of course. And I got my Bible and I'm opening it up. And then I come across Ephesians 1 6. And when I say, words came off of the page and came inside of my heart and changed the way I saw myself up to that point. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror cause I didn't like what I saw. Oh, but when I wow. read Ephesians one six by his glorious grace, I've made you accepted in the beloved game changer. Oh, amen. You yep. mean to tell me the day that I was born, even when my dad didn't want me that I was accepted. You mean to tell me that all the time I was striving for the affirmation of man, that there was a father in heaven who loved mm. me, who called me chosen, who called me accepted, who says I'm good enough? You see, it, it set something free inside of my heart that I no longer have to live for the, for the appraisals of man. I don't have to live for their claps because their claps mean nothing because my father says I'm good enough. He told me who I was. Yes. And then a week later, I was reading Luke 15. And there's a song uh, by Corey Asbury called Reckless Love that was out. And, 
you know, once again, Marcus is, uh, school just was was a struggle for me. So I'm in class. But listen, if I'm if I'm gonna be in class, at least I'm reading the Bible, right? Right. At least, True. You know, at least you're reading something. If I'm not <laughs> if I'm not gonna pay attention, at least I'm in the Word and I'm reading there Luke you go. 15. And the Lord begins to speak to my heart, and I realized that I was the lost sheep that He left the 99 for. Mm, I was yes. the lost sheep that He left. He risked it all for me. Heaven went bankrupt for me, mm. and that's the revelation that I had. And then he speaks to my heart and he says, Marcus, I've given you the ministry of reconciliation. Never make ministry about numbers. I want you to go out there and win my children. And then I heard reach one. It stands for reconciling every abandoned child home. Now this, now check what's crazy about oh, this wow. because people hear that story now, but what's crazy is up to that point, I'm in rehab. My wife was not back in my life. I was facing three felony charges, but I held onto a promise. And anybody listening to this, man, hold on to the promise of God, regardless of the circumstances. Don't let outside circumstances dictate inward peace. No matter what, if God spoke something to you, you hold on to it. Sometimes we got to prophesy to the prophecy. We got to prophesy to ourselves. We have to remind ourselves of what God said. And like the Bible tells us in Corinthians, all God's promises in him are yes and amen. Mm -hmm. But we've got to be in him. And so for the first time in my life, I took the word on and it became something that I lived out. And what's crazy is... I wanted to be a man of integrity for the first time in my life. Oh. Like, man, integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like super bold, right? I'm like, you know, I'm getting clean. I'm, I'm getting healthy again. I'm thinking clearly. The word told me who I am. I'm like, you know, I'm, cl I'm clearly passionate. Yes. But I was like on 10. I'm like, you know what? Like they used to call me in rehab the righteous police. Because I used to be... <laughs> <laughs> anytime because we had to shave every day i'm like oh nope you didn't shave or anytime somebody would be grimy I'm, i used to say that's not building up the kingdom it was just oh, my mentality like yeah. as a man think of in his heart so is he and so uh november 1st i had a court date and i was like okay lord i felt the lord tell me plead guilty i'm like lord you know i love working with kids i i love work i plead guilty because i knew that i did it and i didn't want to waste taxpayer money i was like you know what like God will make a way, even if I can't work with youth again, like I'm going to be a man of integrity for the first time in my life. First time I'm going to man up and I'll never forget. And I didn't, I wasn't all bold, right? Cause <laughs> you know, it's easy to, to tell the story now. Yes. Yeah. I'll never forget standing in front of this judge and I say, hey, judge, Hey, I just want to bypass all court proceedings. I did it. I did everything that's written on that paper and I want to plead guilty. And she looked at me and she had said she had never had somebody be so honest in her courtroom. Oh, wow. She said complete teen challenge and will act as if this never happened. And to this day, I don't have a record whatsoever. Oh my God. Amen. I just got so chills. Like that, <laughs> what? And it's crazy. And I tell young people all the time, you know, God will provide a way. It's all about being being real and being true and not doing things with the wrong motives. Like my heart was, God, I just want to be who you called me to be. And I was living in the fullness of that. And, and it's crazy because all of us are guilty. Oh, <laughs> right. We're that's all true. guilty. Yeah. But understanding that the finished work on the cross and it's crazy that, that Jesus loves us so much that he went and died. He died for me. Yeah. Like he died for me. Like for my sins, he died for me. Why can't I live for him? Mm. And so uh, I graduated rehab June 30th. I was there for 13 months um, and it was a crazy program. I could only talk to my wife for 15 minutes a week. They take you out of the world. Like wow. you, they take you away from all the distractions, no TV, no, no internet, no, no self, no nothing. You focus on, uh, we had a work study program. We went to church every day and I read my Bible. I read 50 books in a year. I mean, I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. So <laughs> reading and, you know, That's impressive. I had never read a book up to Teen Challenge. I just didn't. Yeah. And so I was in the program and I graduated uh, June 30th. And I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, babe, we should throw a celebration party because this is the first thing I'm ever graduating from. And she tells me, <laughs> you know, we don't we don't celebrate graduating from rehab. <laughs> uh, but I came home and God completely restored my family. Wow. My wife came to every family day. Uh, she was she was there. Uh, she allowed God to do what God, only God could do. Mm -hmm. She trusted the process. And we have two beautiful little girls now. You guys pray for me, girl, dad, life. That's Love right. Me, well, congratulations, yeah. though. And it's crazy. Exactly a year later from when Reach One was born, when the Lord spoke to my heart about Reach One, 
I had an opportunity. I got a phone call from a, from a principal in Ashland. He said, hey, you know, we, we heard your story and we want you to come and present to our kids. And what's, what's crazy about that is I was working a job at United Way and I was a community education director. And so, but I knew what the Lord called me to. I knew that this is what it was. I'm like, okay, God, I trust you. And the first word the Lord ever gave me to preach on was 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And I didn't really understand the significance of it until that moment for we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Is do I trust what's inside of me or do I trust what I can see? It's easy for me to trust uh, this table that I'm uh, that's in front of me. It's holding all my stuff up because I can see it. But can I trust that God is going to provide even when I can't see it? Mm -hmm. And so I had to quit. I literally had to choose between that job or reach one. And I chose reach one and God took it and he blessed it in 2019. Uh, we spoke to 120,000 young people all around the country. Wow. And we oh were going to double that in 2020. Yeah, you are. But, oh, my God. But gosh. COVID, you know, yeah. COVID slowed oh, us down, yes. but we're picking things back up yeah. now. And, you know, kids need hope. They need to know that they're loved. And it's crazy because it's a unique opportunity. I get invited into a public space to to speak to kids in a public school. And I don't talk, I can't talk about Jesus. But I preach the gospel and use words when necessary. We've had kids give their lives to Christ. We had teachers give their life to Christ in our assemblies, and it's crazy. And what I believe the Lord wants to do in, the, in this this new season is he wants the young people to know who he is and know that their value is in him and not in anything external. Yes, uh, and amen. amen. Holy cow. Yes. That's that's in incredible. Now, so you're flying out today somewhere. I'm flying. Yeah, I'm going out to Dallas. I'm going out to Upper Room. It's gonna be fun. I'm oh excited. Oh my gosh! So what's what is Upper Room? Is that a um... so Upper Room is a church network? Uh, it was birthed. Uh, I can't I can't remember the day that it was birthed, but there's um, this organization called One Voice Student Missions and the Jesus Club, and so they're probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, youth gospel led organizations in the world. And they're all about schools and school assemblies. And so with Reach One, I'm hoping to go out there and partner with what they're doing and and bring that back to Ohio. And, you know, the reality is this. There's 66,000 high schools in the country. If I went to a different high school every single day, I'd go to 365. I'm not even making a dent. It's going to take oh, wow. an army. Yeah. An army of people to reach these young people. But what I believe is coming to the earth. I believe there is a revival, a youth-led revival that is going to sweep our country where young people are no longer going to find their value in Instagram or TikTok. They're going to find their value in the tangible word of God because this is the thing that's alive and active and it changes everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to be a part of that. Oh my gosh. Yes and amen. <laughs> Holy cow. You're taking us to church and I'm here for it. <laughs> um, no, so let me great. ask you a question. You're talking about partnering uh, with yeah. them and then you're talking about youth uh, leading that and i think that yeah. as a good segue to ask you about your partnership with be the change and how Absolutely, and man. and how you got plugged in with them since yeah. we know them from church and sure. how, how did sure. you guys connect for sure so we we have a mutual friend david leonard um amazing man love dave he and i connected at a live music festival in 2019 where i was there and the alive uh, directors on my board and I was just backstage just talking to these Christian artists. And I saw this guy and we connected, became friends. And then I saw he post, he had reshared something and it had something to do with youth on his story on Instagram. And I'm a go getter. I'm, I just go. For I couldn't it. I tell care. that about you. I, I, <laughs> I like reached out to this organization because I deeply care about young people. And there was just something in me that told me to reach out. And next thing you know, it, they were writing me a message at the exact same time. And we just hit it off. And I said, Hey, it was, at the peak of COVID, right? I think it was March or April last year. And I was like, man, like, why don't you guys come out here? Why don't you guys just pack up your RV and just... Which and they so did. <laughs> if you guys know anything about them, they are go-getters. Yes, they, they are. Care. And uh, next thing you know, it, a few weeks later, they drove on out and we spent three days and just, it was amazing to connect with kingdom leaders, mm -hmm. young people that are just serious about Jesus, serious about raising awareness for suicide and, and using the gifts, using everything that God gave them. You know, there's a parable of the talents and, you know, these people, they're given a certain measure and one person buries theirs, the other person sows and the other person sows. And so the master comes back and the one who buried it was afraid. They were afraid to use what, what, what their master had given them. 
But with me, I want to use everything that God gave me. And the same thing with Be The Change. They use every single thing that God gave them. I want to be found sowing. Uh, on my deathbed, yeah, like right. I want to be giving off any amount of revelation I got before I go and be with Jesus because I want to give. It's better to give than to receive. And if I want to keep what I have, I have to give it away. And so we connected and um, we just began to dream. And I just love, we went live with them and they, they were able to worship and just sing some of their original music and share their story. And it was powerful. It was powerful when you hear a testimony. What is so powerful about a testimony? When you know that somebody overcame something, somebody went through something and overcame it and can live to tell about it. Yes. And so they did that. And just with Braden, him sharing his story mm -hmm. and, and Sydney, it just was awesome to connect with them. And I love young people. Anybody that knows me, I am living my best life when I am with people 18 and under. <laughs> yep. I'm just a big kid, especially yeah. middle schoolers. <laughs> like that is my lane. That's your jam. And, uh, we begin to dream. And uh, we just have been connecting ever since. So cool. Well, we love the Garrett's. So shout out to them for yeah. connecting us. I mean, they've been taught. I can't tell you how many times I've heard great things about you and how much they love you. And then it wasn't but a month ago that they yes. was like, you guys should have him on your podcast. And we jumped at it. So yeah, uh, we're so I'm grateful honored. for that connection. So thank you to them. Um, for anyone who has watched the podcast before, uh, this we like to talk about talents and gifts. And so we've touched on that a little bit. I think perseverance and drive yeah. is one of yours for sure. I, I just hear that in every in every obstacle and every opportunity you've had, you're consistently driven and striving. And so I think that's a, a clear one. But I would love to hear from you what you think your talents and your gifts are. Absolutely. So uh, I believe I have the gift of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Encouraging people to me isn't hard. Because I see, like even looking at you guys, when I look over your heads, I see a 10 out of 10. I see your creative value. And so it's easy for me to speak life to that. Like what you guys are doing with this podcast is changing lives. Like it's impacting people where they're at. And I just really believe in my spirit that there's going to be somebody that hears these these stories and these interviews. And they're going to come to know the knowledge of Jesus through the stories. They're going to know who they are by hearing somebody's story. And like I want to thank you guys for being faithful mm -hmm. to that. Oh, being faithful to you. step out. Thanks. Being faithful to start oh, wow. it and, and to be pioneers. Like what you guys are doing is paving the way. You're setting like um, instructions for people that are going to come behind you. And that excites me because I hope that it's a bunch of young people that That's get a right. chance to see. And and next thing you know, it be having these in you know other countries, and it's just going to be amazing. Well, so, thank you for my, that. That was awesome. Thank you so much absolutely. for that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Encouragement is one of your yeah, talents definitely. and gifts for sure. <laughs> I will affirm that. <laughs> yeah, cooking. Listen, they call me Chef Marcus. Uh, I got to show y'all real quick. Oh no, you know, I'm ready. I just I literally 10:52 this morning. I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, you probably can't see it. No, all but you well. can send it to me and I'll throw it up on the screen. I will. <laughs> it is a steak that I just made oh. and sitting upstairs <laughs> waiting for me. Oh, no. <laughs> I love to cook. Just, I think it's the creative aspect of cooking and being able to make something out of nothing mm -hmm. and to please somebody. Mm, like, yes. I, I love it. That is just my heart. Um, I, I believe the Lord has just given me a, it's a go-getter mentality. If I want to do something, I'm just not going to stop. Nobody's ever going to stop me. And there's one thing I never finished. I never finished school. I just, I just didn't. But I'm actually in my last year of finishing my bachelor's degree. Aww. And what I tell young people all the time is, you know, I had people in my life tell me that I was never going to do well. And I got straight A's one time in my life and I had all PE classes. Oh. <laughs> you know, poor, I better get straight A's. <laughs> right. <laughs> For the first time in my life, last semester, I got straight A's. Oh, congratulations. Because oh, my gosh. yourself. And I'm 33 years old. But if you apply yourself, there's nothing that you can't do. You just got to learn how to discipline and focus. And uh, we started this company called Reach One Creative where, like, once again, I wanted to take pictures. And I couldn't speak anymore because of COVID. I'm like, well, I'm going to reach kids. I'm going to use what God has given me. And so I started watching YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. I started watching all kind of YouTube. And I taught myself photography. And now we've got a pretty successful photography business. So Wow. Congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> Holy cow. I, I just this that. this theme runs a lot through our podcast and so I and so I want to name it because I'm I see it here and it's just this theme of obedience. It's this theme of hearing God's voice and being obedient to the calling and making the most out of it. COVID hit. 
You saw this other opportunity. You were obedient. You did the work. And God bless that. And that happens a lot in our podcast (laughs) guest stories. And so I just want to name that because I think that's important. I think someone needs to hear that. Um, So thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. And even anyone listening, like how do you manage the the adversities that come in life? How do you pivot? Mm -hmm. So when the world gets shut down, how do you pivot? And my identity was found in speaking. It's easy to find your identity in what you do. I think society Mm. is shaped for us to find our value and, and acceptance and what I can produce or being productive. Yes. But let's take a step back. When you get punched in the jaw by life, how are you responding? A lot of us want to react, right? A lot of us want to swing back and fight back, but you have to learn how to respond. And like, that's one of the fruits of the spirit is being patient and like, okay, Lord, what are you teaching me in this moment? And what God taught me, my revelation from COVID, because I ended up getting COVID. I was in ICU for six days. And I thought I was going. <laughs> man, what? I tell you what, man, it's it's been a crazy life. What? <laughs> yes, it has. Oh my yeah, god! December fifth, man, I was in I was in ICU, and you know it it was scary. Yeah. But I had to come into agreement with uh, a superior reality that God is good regardless of what happens. Shadrach, mm-hmm. Meshach, and Abednego in the Book of Daniel, they said that they weren't going to bow no matter what. And I came to that place where I'm like, okay, Lord, you know I want to see my girls again. Mm-hmm. But even if this doesn't happen, I believe that you're a healer. I trust you. But even if it doesn't happen, I'm still going to bless your name. Uh, and next thing you know, some crazy things happen. My lungs miraculously like turned around and it was it was wild. And the doctors were saying we, they had never seen something like that because they said we were coming in here to put you on a ventilator the next morning. And But God showed up. But when we manage the pivots in life, we have to know what's the game plan. Do you have a plan for your life? You know, a man without a plan is a foolish man, but I write my plan in pencil. So many people want to write their in permanent marker, like, nope, this is what's going to happen. It's, yeah, that's right. Some people tattoo I thought I was going to be an NFL superstar. Right? Like, you tattooed that on your arm. So, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I would just encourage people, what's tattooed on your heart? Yeah. Mm, and what truth yes. is tattooed on your heart? Yes. Is are you good when life shuts down or when you lose somebody? Or when a parent dies to ca- of cancer or, or something drastic happens, do we know that God is good either way? And I and anybody that, you know, maybe you've got idols in your life. Maybe you've got something that you put before God. My encouragement to you from my own experience, I can remember having my family before God. And when I was in Teen Challenge, the Lord told me, sacrifice my family at the altar. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how. It was August 3rd, 2017. I'll never forget it. And I had to crawl up to the altar. And I was weeping as if somebody passed away oh, and somebody did wow. pass away. I gave the old Marcus a eulogy and some of us need to give the old man a eulogy and come alive in the knowledge that God loves us, that he chose you for such a time as this. If you've got breath in your lungs, you still have purpose in your life. That means you've got people to impact. Well, Marcus, I'm not a leader. Okay. Even the most introverted person will impact 10,000 people. That whole, I'm not a leader thing doesn't fly with me. I believe every person is called to lead. Just lead well. Oh my gosh. Yes and amen. That's great. That was such a good word. I mean, I'm so here for it. (laughs) Well, so I've been, obviously, since we've been connected, I've been doing some research and I've been watching news articles on you and Mm -hmm. reading all of these different stories that people have out there. And so I did, I know that there's a couple of other things that you've been doing besides Reach One and Reach One Creative. So I do want to talk about that. But if if it's okay with you, I'd like to um, cut over to a clip I saw. Yeah. Um, that that we that we saw. Um, it's a promo for Reach One, isn't it? Yes, Absolutely. that's right. That's yeah. What sure. so is that uh, okay? Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll cut do over to do that. We'll do that. My name is Marcus McFalling. I'm the founder and CEO of Reach One, which is an acronym stands for Reconciling Every Abandoned Child Home. It's an outreach youth ministry where I travel and I speak with the goal of inspiring a generation of world changers to live a life of purpose and destiny. I see an amazing young man. I see somebody that can change the world if they want to and they believe in themselves. What's your name? Brendan. Brendan. What do you want to do with your life, man? Be successful. You want to be successful and you will be, man. So school and organization, what they can expect if they book me to come and speak. One, I'm going to be passionate. Two, I'm going to inspire your students. Three, I'm going to find the kid in your school that thinks the lowest of themselves to see themselves as good enough, to see themselves as beautiful, to see themselves as smart, and to see themselves as somebody that can be an overcomer. (laughs) 
I believe that there's this absenteeism in the home where kids aren't getting the love that they need. They're not hearing the words of affirmation. I love to speak life and I think that I'm needed because they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, that's a lie. Words hurt, but the same way that words hurt, words can make you feel good and they can inspire you to live a different life right where you're at. And that's what I'm all about, speaking life and inspiring every single student that I see. So if you're interested in having me at your school or your organization, you can go to our website, reachoneinc.com. There's a book now form. You can see student testimonials. You can see recommendations from just different principals, different community leaders, and uh, you can fill the form out. We will get there as soon as possible. We'll get it on our schedule. We'll come in and we'll inspire your students. Okay, well, that was amazing. It's so inspiring. Oh yes. my gosh! Thank that you for sharing that. That was such a sweet that. clip. Yes. Um, yeah. So you've you've got Reach One going. You've got Reach One Creative. Talk to yeah. us a little bit about Reach One Leadership. Yeah, Reach One Leadership. So my wife is the the director of our Reach One Leadership program. So I went through this curriculum when I graduated from rehab. I came home and my first job before United Way was cleaning the church. I was a church janitor, and I was like, you know what? I was not. I wasn't fixating for drugs, so I was doing it so joyful. And a lot of us need to understand is, am I going to be found faithful in the moments when, when I feel like I'm unseen? You know, just like yes. King David. King David was tending his father's sheep. He was found faithful doing what God told him to do. And I was just sewing. I was just cleaning the toilets. And, you know, I went through this curriculum through the church called Giant Worldwide. And it's all about knowing yourself to lead yourself. And when I say it transformed my life. It gave me language to understand myself, to understand my shortcomings, to not make excuses for them, but to actually learn how to address, you know, some of my bad tendencies. And so my wife then got a hold of it and she saw the change in me and she went through it herself. And we, we decided to both get certified in it. And then we we're like, you know what? Like, why don't we start our own leadership department? Like, if we can get this in young people now. It could change their lives. Why, why wait until they're adults when they're already jacked up? Like, let's get them even younger. <laughs> and so we launched uh, Reach One Leadership, and we have this adopt a school program where our goal is to go into a school district and help change the internal culture of the school from, you know, the top down from staff to students. And in particular, my specialty is working with young people. Uh, there's something called the ACE study. It's adverse childhood experiences. And it talks about the different traumas that we go through. And so there's a scale of one to 10, what your ACE score is. Uh, and these are like crazy traumatic events, like somebody, a parent dying, you know, something, somebody, you know, mistreating you in, inappropriately, things like that. Well, growing up, my ACE score was nine out of 10, oh, nine word. out of 10 things. And wow. so understanding that young people are going through some of the most traumatic things and have no outlet. That's what really I'm passionate about is helping give them language. Like we may be dealt crummy hands in life. So what am I going to play? The woe is me card. Like I can't play the woe is me card because statistically speaking, I shouldn't be on this call. I should be either dead or in jail. Yeah. Right? Oh. But God. And but so I God. want young people to know that if we can trust God and we can take all the junk that we went through and realize it wasn't for nothing, that God is going to use it all. He's going to use every single tear, every single tear that you've cried, God is going to use. We just have to know how to harvest those tears and put it in good soil and put it on a good seat and God will bring the increase. And so that's what we're hoping Reach One Leadership is able to do. Well, I'm hoping this segues. You have a You Matter assembly tour coming yes, up. Yes, You Matter. Come on. Let's go. So, man, you guys get me excited. <laughs> so Reach One, uh, for our four core values they all start with you. You matter. You are not alone. You can get up. You can hear from God. You matter speaks to your value. You are not alone speaks to community. You can get up speaks to resiliency. And you can hear from God speaks to every person in the world has a unique ability to hear from God. Mm -hmm. We don't have to live off of another person's revelation or another person's relationship with God that God wants to hear from you. Your voice is sweet to him. Your voice matters to him. Amen. And so our You Matter Assembly Tour is geared towards helping every student we come in contact realize that, that they matter. And we've been able to do that. We had a few assemblies last month, and we're hoping to, to fill our schedule up in the fall in 2022. That is so cool. Okay, I gotta we got to plug here. Where can people uh, book you, I guess? Absolutely. Where can people yeah, book they, you? 
for sure. So they can go to reachoneinc.com. And then there's a few different tabs. We have a tab for Reach One Leadership, a tab for Reach One Creative, and they have a tab for Marcus McFarlane. You just click the tab for Marcus, fill out the book now for him, and uh, I'll love to come and inspire your students. Oh, my gosh. That is so cool. That is awesome. But, but in addition to all of that, there's a documentary on you. Yeah. Death, death to so Life. The document, yeah, our Death to Life documentary. So I had a friend, Nate Power. Shout out to Nate. He and I, I flew him out here in 2019 because I had 16 assemblies in a week and I didn't have any promo material. I'm like, well, people know that I'm speaking, but I need to like, you know, show it. Yeah. And so I flew him out here and we, we had this dream of creating this documentary of telling my story on how I overcame addiction and just both sides of it, not just the one who overcame addiction, but also my wife who was, you know, impacted just as greatly by my addiction and how do the families of people who are struggling in addiction overcome. And so we shot this documentary and we've we've been in 14 different festivals all across the country. We're currently just got accepted and nominated for best picture in the largest Christian film festival in the world in Orlando, Florida. We'll be going down there in May. Very cool. And so God is just oh, awesome. He, he's doing what he says. He's yeah, he is. I'm here for it. That is incredible. Oh, I love that. Congratulations. Yes, that's Thank very, oh my gosh, very cool. Very cool. Appreciate that. Well, I got to tell you, this has been so life giving to us. Yes. We um we have. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little real here, so okay. I apologize in, in advance. Go ahead, do it. But every morning that we do this podcast, something goes wrong. Yeah. Today it was my printer, <laughs> and mm. I couldn't get our scripts <laughs> printed, and it affects me. And yeah. I I wasn't in the right headspace, and it was it was tough. And this this happens. Every time we film, yes. something goes wrong, and and I know who I know who's doing that, yeah. but I know who's greater and who's stronger and and more powerful and it can help us overcome. Amen. And I got to tell you, this has just been so life giving to me today. So thank you so much. I'm not a youth anymore, but <laughs> I am so inspired and so Amen. encouraged, and I know more. that our our listeners are going to be as well. And so you are. I'm so proud of you, and I just want to speak a blessing over over what you're doing and on all of all of the kids you're going to reach today in Dallas or is that, that's where you're going right yep, yep. in Dallas and, and all across the world that you're going to reach father God I am just so grateful for Marcus and for his ministry and for all of the all of the ways that you have blessed him and blessed the, his obedience and I'm just so grateful to him God thank you for his new friendship thank you for the way that you connected us and ways that we had no idea were coming and father we just love you so much and we're so grateful for for him and I pray that you will bless him and bless the students that are going to be um, hearing his his words word um father god please speak through him and i just pray lord that you even now you'll be on the hearts and the minds of those kids and and those youth and and help them and be pre- preparing them to receive um your word through marcus and so father god we love him and we're so grateful uh, it's in jesus name we pray amen amen marcus amen. we are so grateful for you this has been so incredible and um i'm so grateful for your time uh, is there anything that we missed that you wanted to cover before we wrap up yeah i would just say uh, to anybody that may hear this um, I just want you to know that your life matters. Your life has so much value. And, and the enemy is, has done a good job of tricking us and, and getting our our focus off of the right thing. And I just believe the Lord wants, to, wants us to make the main thing the main thing. And just realize that your life, the way that God has created you, he, he formed you uniquely in your mother's womb. Mm-hmm. And he's called you. And you have dreams inside of you that the Lord put there. Like God put things and he pre-wired us with dreams inside of us to see them come out. And I just want to encourage you to go for it. Find people in your life that can be your cheerleaders. Find people in your life that can speak life to you. Find people in your life that can remind you of why you started. But most importantly, remember that Jesus loves you. He's called you and you are accepted in the beloved. That is your new name today. Beloved, accepted, chosen, forgiven. And I, I don't know if anybody needs to hear this or not, but maybe there's been somebody in your life that's hurt you or done something wrong to you. I just want to say sorry on their behalf. And I want mm-hmm. you to know that I love you and that you have unique, a unique opportunity to step into the fullness of what God has for you. It's go time. That's oh, right. Yeah, yes. That's and awesome. amen. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, thank, well, thank you again you so, so much. much. Yes. It we was love very you. nice to meet you. And we're praying nice for you. Yes. And um, safe travels time. today. Yes. And we will talk to you later. Okay. All right. God bless Bye-bye. You God bless. Bye. For more information on Project Brickworks and how you can get involved, visit us online at projectbrickworks.org. To subscribe to our newsletter, text BRICK to 55498. 
And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like our Facebook page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button, give us a like and turn on notifications. If you're listening to this on the podcast, please subscribe and be encouraging with your rating, please. We love you all. Be blessed. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.